This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, all. Welcome to KSR Consulting Service. My name is Koti. Here we are going to discuss about data science. So in today's session, we are going to cover heavily about what is data science. What is the need of data science? With a simple analogy, how do you define the data science? And we'll see the life cycle of the data science and uh, we'll discuss about the what is the typical day in your life of a data scientist? What is the role of data scientist? These are the different and what are the different type of data we can discuss? So these are the things we are going to cover. So before we are going to start this session, first of all, I would like to explain you all you know data science is all about simple one definition one layman definition is all about how do you make a decisions how do you make a decision uh, it is all about just by looking at this number here we are talking about all the in terms of numbers in terms of the graphs uh, right so by looking at these numbers or by looking at these graphs we can able to make the decisions so in order to make the decision why we need to make a decision so in order to understand that we will go will go under understand about the step by step first of all what is the need of data science what do you, what is the data science uh, how do you explain the data science with a simple analogy what are different types of the data we have which is available to us so we'll discuss about the one of the uh, life cycle data science life cycle what are the different phases which are available under the data science live data science with a real time use case in today's session we are going to discuss about how telecom industry uh, ex will explain the one of the problem which facing the telecom industry with the with the help of life cycle and at the end most of them have a doubt about might have heard about the terms called ai ml and deep learning what does be, what does it mean and then we'll discuss about what is the typical day day in your life of a data scientist what is the different roles of the what is the role of the data scientist in the world market these are the things we are going to cover okay so guys imagine as you know that as you know previously we stored the information in the form of structured data or it is a structured data means if you look into the first step here it is in the form of the table format table format is nothing but which contains the rows and columns so for an, rows and columns maybe for an example you are working in an organization let's say you are working in an organization called infosys now you would like to create a table so employee id employee name designation of the employee location of the employee skill set of the employee salary of the employee. it is a kind of a table initially we used to store the data in the form of um, excel or simple to say not excel we would simple to say flat files what do you mean by flat file flat file is nothing but the data which is in the form of ms excel csv text files ms excel csv and text file and and as the day increase i mean as the volume ms excel can able to store or flat files can able to store up to 1 million records 1 million is nothing but 10 lakh record imagine your data is more than 1 million imagine your data is more than 1 million so you you can flat files cannot able to handle such kind of things you have to st store somewhere the data the place you are storing the data that place is called as a data warehouse so data warehouse is nothing but like sql servers rdbms dbms mysql teradata these are the data warehouses so once you store the data okay let's say facebook is a company where they're storing the data uh, they are generating every day one petabyte of information every day imagine how much world is able to generate in a day they're able to generate i mean in a minute they're able to generate one two point five etabyte etabyte megabyte gigabyte terab i mean terabyte peta eta like this kind of thing now let's say we are storing all the data in the data warehouse we are storing all the data in the data warehouse so our task is done no just to store the information it is a kind of a raw data it is a kind of a raw data but with the whatever the information which you have stored in the data warehouse with the help of business intelligence component with the help of business intelligence 
the business intelligence component which could be like a power bi tableau like ms excel or anything so what we can with the help of business intelligence component we can able to predominantly we can able to generate the uh, predetermined reports for an example let's say in today's session entire today's session we will discuss about the telecom company okay in tomorrow's session we'll discuss another example in today's session let's say telecom company as you are using the postpaid or prepaid let's say imagine you are using the prepaid service 90 percent of indian market is a prepaid market 90 percent of india market is a prepaid market be it a vodafone of course vi now vodafone and idea combined is a vi airtel geo or some what what blah 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 now all the share market 90 percent of them are having the 90 percent of them are having the pre prepaid let's say as a prepaid customer one month i may use my services another month i may not use my services i mean to say one month i am as active customer another month i am an inactive customer inactive means here the definition of active and inactive they are the two different terms we are using active means i am using the services what do you mean by services here services is nothing but maybe you are you are doing a call to your mother your mom you are doing call to your girlfriend you are, you are calling to your friend anything inactive means you have not done any action you have not done any performance that means your data is a zero your voice calls are zero of course voice calls means incoming and outgoing both are the zero with the help of traditional business intelligence bi component i can able to generate a report in a such a way month on month month on month or week on week uh, can you tell me uh, can you provide information of active customer and inactive customer so this kind of simple reports we can able to generate with the help of predetermined things or maybe can you tell me what is the average monthly usage for region wise maybe bangalore hyderabad delhi like this region we can able to produce this reports now as this are changing initially we collected the data structurally we collected data structured data which is a kind of a table format now as market has changed along with the structured data we are also collecting the semi-structured and unstructured data along with the structured data along with the structured data now we are collecting the semi-structured and unstructured data so as we defined structured data means the data which is in the form of table format we'll go in depth of this in the coming slides we'll go in depth of understanding what the structured data it is a table format it's a kind of table format. what do you mean by unstructured data and structure it is a collecting both structural data as well as unstructured data of course we have another type is called a semi-structured data whatever the data which we generating from the website the data is called as a semi-structured data whatever the data which you are generating for an example uh, let's say amazon when you order a product in amazon automatically amazon website web blog servers they store the data in the form of web blog files which is in the form of json format for an example you have a data face identification mask face mask identification gender prediction this kind of data is an unstructured data like a text data image data audio file video file this is called as unstructured data and as we know that as we are looking it day by day minute by minute second by second volume of data is increasing tremendously normal data warehouses traditional data warehouses cannot able to store of course they can able to store but they cannot able to manage or they cannot able to process such kind of huge volume of data in order to process huge volume of data in order to process process huge volume of data we are going to use the big data we are going to use the big data the first platform for the big data is hadoop now people are storing for the big data using the first hadoop followed by the spark and followed by now people are using the cloud people are using the cloud the cloud could be three other three months three kind of clouds are there one is azure aws and google cloud services now as we are as we are collecting the complex data i mean to say complex data means are semi-structured and unstructured to process or to generate the insights or reports from the complex data our traditional business intelligence component may not help us traditional traditional business intelligence can able to help us in the form of structured data it cannot able to help us for semi-structured and unstructured data 
so to generate the reports or insights from the complex data we are going to use the data science algorithms we are going to use the data science algorithms with the help of scientific discovery methods with the help of scientific discovery method here what do you mean by scientific discovery method scientific discovery methods is nothing but mathematics and statistical methods with the help of mathematical and statistical methods so so now that is the reason i mean to say to understand or to process the complex data to generate the report from the complex data we are going to use the data science sir it looks more scary to me you are talking about the mathematics you are talking about the complex data you are talking about the statistics sir i am not understanding can you define me a, can you define what do you mean by data science you explain me what is data science correct but can you define can you tell me what is data science let's try to understand guys what is the data science now so okay before i go to the next slide do you have any questions on this first slide guys so so your uh, data science is a data science algorithm is a concept right it is a technique or a, yes techniques basically yeah okay i mean uh, do we have any specific tool for it to use this technique or any bi tool we can implement this technique any programming tool like python you can use sas you can use r you can use excel also you can use for it there is no specific tool you can use anything depends on your requirement and complexity of the data okay yeah. great thank you kavita now yeah. any other questions guys please i want to say i want to be session should be more interactive if you ask more questions i can deliver more and more okay now let's try to understand what is data science let's try to understand what is data science here in the data science i can add, can able to see the two different two words one is the data second is science so let's try to divide the data science into two different i mean data science into two different components one component is data and other component is science other component is science so data means it is the structural process of collecting the structured data semi structured data and unstructured data data science is nothing but it's a, you are dividing the data science into two different components one component is the data guys other component is the science here data means it is a structural process of collecting the structured data semi structured data unstructured data which mean to say we are collecting the audio video image files png means image files emails emails log files log files means log and json means these are the web log files the, that means we are collecting the information which is related to the website data which is related to the website data and of course we have structured data okay this is just simple data it could be any of the three forms we'll discuss in detail about the one by one guys data side on the other side guys if you look into here it is a kind of a chemical lab just a just chemical lab kind of a circle moon or, or eclipse all some kind of mechanical setting so what is what do you interpret by just looking at this graph guys science is nothing but it is a process of process of process of exploring i mean science is a process of exploring first of all exploring observing identifying finding out something science is nothing but it is a process of exploring are observing identifying or finding out something new so simple to say as a layman what scientist does scientist finding something new uh, first day suppose let's say isro scientists they are finding out how to set up the earth on the space on the moon let's say drdo how to find the missiles how to create a missile hey hey mission can you create a missile will it create definitely no first they are trying to understand what is the architecture of the mission what is the architecture of the missile in order to okay create the architecture while creating the architecture we may do mistakes so that means we are observing okay where we are doing the mistakes we are doing the test once you have done the test case are exploring while exploring we are finding the some insights or observations 
based on the observation we will come up with the findings with the help of findings we can create something new that is called as, that is what generally scientist does here simple meaning data science means one one component is the data other component is the science data is a structural process of collecting the collecting the structured data semi structured data and unstructured data science it is a process of exploring observing finding out something new let's combine the two terms data and science how do you combine guys it is a data science is nothing but process of extracting knowledge that means with the help of science first we are exploring with the help of exploring we are identifying the something new here where do where, where do we do the exploration we are do the exploration on <coughs> sorry we do the exploration on data so while doing the exploration on data we finding something uh, some insights are something new so that means with the help of exploration of the data we are going to get some knowledge we are extracting the some knowledge with the help of knowledge we can able to generate the insights insight means it is a kind of a report so let's say every day government of india is releasing the covid report for what kind of, what what age group of people are impacting with the covid what is the symptoms which age group of the people because it's a kind of insights based on their observation with the help of knowledge and insights we are going to make the decisions we are going to make the decisions so simple to say guys simple to say as a layman in a simple one word data science is nothing but data science is nothing but how do you make a decision how to make a decision simple to say as a layman data science is all about making a decisions sir you have said that is absolutely correct but it is look like more of a theoretical as well as a bookish knowledge can you give me a simple example so that we can understand better about the definition so can you give me an example where do you make a decision with a simple layman example okay so guys by knowingly or unknowingly everyone in our daily lives we are using the by knowingly or unknowingly everyone in our daily life we are using the we are using the data science how sir can you give an example so here a person thinking about uh, here a person is thinking about the in front of him there are the two routes we can able to see there are the two routes we can able to see root a and root b we can able to can you please keep the mic in mute in front of him there are the two routes root a and root b some of the cars are traveling through root a i mean it's kind of a dense high dense kind of thing whereas the root b only see, uh, it seems only single car is traveling through the root b now he is thinking he wear the shoot and all these things like most likely chances he could be a businessman or is it employee kind of thing likely chance so he might think that what is the uh, what is the fastest route and he is thinking through the fastest route to the work let's say this is the route a which is having the highest more number of the cars whereas the route b does not have any car he is thinking the which is the choose the fastest route to the work does the route a is the fastest route to the work or does the route b is the fastest route to the work let's say this is the route a this is the route a root a this is the root b so guys any day as a data scientist if you want to solve any business problem we need to think five terms guys we need to think about the five different terms first of all define the problem as i just mentioned data science is all about making a decision is all about making a decision guys how do you make a decision with the help of machine learning algorithm or deep learning algorithm or with the help of ai artificial intelligence we can able to uh, make a decision define the problem first and foremost guys so define a problem so what is your problem what problem are you going to achieve or what problem are you going to solve this is the first and foremost problem once you are clear once you are clear to understand the problem once you are clear about the business problem the next step is data collection data collection 
collecting the data from various sources you may collect the data from cloud you may your data residing at traditional databases or your data resides at the flat files or your data resides at spark or your data resides at the big data once you collect the data how do you process how do you process the data while processing the data generally when you collect the data you generally collect raw data which raw data means the data which does not have any meaning or whatever the information you know you uh, you know that information you have collected simple whatever the information we collected though you are collecting from the cloud or though you are collecting from the big data or though you are collecting from the traditional databases or though you are collected from the data from though you are collected data from flat files just you are collecting that data so that data is just simply called as a raw data so what generally data processing does convert the raw data into more useful useful or, or convert the or transform the raw data into more useful format that will help us to and that will help us to understand the data more in depth so data processing is a backbone or a heart of any data science projects even for data engineers also it is the most important part once your data is in the useful format what we are trying to do we explore the data we we explore the data and analyzing the data and explore means understand the data try to understand what is there in the data once we understand the data what we are trying to do we are going to analyze the data we are going to analyze the data we are going to analyze the data um um analyze the data uh analyzing the data and finally once we analyze the data we are going to make the solution uh, uh, we are going to make the finally we are going to make the solution solution will help us to make the decision solution will help us uh, decision solution will help us to make the decision this is a simple basic analysis guys so now as per this problem as he is thinking about the route which is the fastest route does the route is the fastest route or does the route be the fastest route so our business problem very clear now choose the fastest route to the work choose the fastest route to the work does the route is the fastest route to the work or does the route be the fastest route to the work so define the problem we are defining we are clearly we are going to define the problem choose the fastest route to the work that is our business problem now this is a business problem he is thinking about choose the fastest route does the route is the fastest route or does the route be the fastest route now we defined the problem very clearly so fastest route to the work that means he is traveling through to office from where he is traveling to the office from his home from his home right so that means we have collected the so we have by 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 come by applying the common sense as we know as we are observing every day we have collected the some information so as we know that here in this we can see the two routes route a and route b so the distance from route a to the office is 14 kilometers whereas distant to the office from route b to the office is 20 kilometers so speed the speed the way we are traveling the speed is 10 kilometer per hour 10 kilometer per hour 10 km per hour so the day of week let's say tuesday let's say day of the week is a tuesday so time early morning 9 am humidity which capture perception and humidity which contains the 95% of the data and traffic flow which is the route a is having the high dense whereas the route b is the mild traffic whereas the route b is the mild traffic whereas the route b is the mild along with this information we also collect some other information such as like type of the vehicle whether it is a two wheeler or four wheeler like two wheeler means moped or four wheeler means car kind of thing gypsy kind of and type type of the vehicle we collected and of course we also collected the uh, color of the vehicle also collect we also collected the color of the color of the vehicle we also collected the color of the vehicle so this is a simple data collection is just we collected the raw data we just collected the raw data so some of the factors we have collected the distance speed day of the week day of week time of day 
humidity, traffic flow, type of the vehicle, color of the vehicle, perception. Like these are some of the information we have collected. Simple, sim simple layman words we can say it is a raw data. Just by looking at the, all the data, we cannot able to make a decision. So what we need to do, we need to process the data. How do you process the data, guys? The next step in the data processing. What the data, what the data processing does? Convert the raw data into more useful formats, either by add, either by adding the new attributes, attributes nothing but new information, new columns, or just by dropping some of the information from some of the existing information, or just by dropping some of the. For an example, if you look into the data here, we had, we did not add the humidity because either you are traveling through route A or traveling through route B, humidity is the same. Humidity is the same. Humidity doesn't matter to us. Your humidity is 100% or 70%, 94% or 120%, whatever it could be. You, you have to travel to office. In that moment, we could not consider the humidity as a major factor. Color of the vehicle. Color of the vehicle also doesn't matter to us. Whether it is red color, green color, white color, black color, yellow color, whatever the color it is. I have to go to office. Type of the vehicle, whether it is you have a four wheeler or two wheeler, you have to go. So that means what we does in the data processing, simple layman terms, uh, we remove the unnecessary or unwanted information, which we does not require for us. So some of the information we dropped, such as like humidity, type of the vehicle, or color of the vehicle. Now. Once your data processing is once your data processing is done, which means to say the data which is available in more useful format. Once you does, so what we need to do, we need to explore and analyze. We need to explore once after data processing. What we need to do, we need to do the explore and analyze. So first of all, just look into these two factors. Just look these two factors. Look into these two factors. What are the two factors, guys? the two factors like distance and speed suppose there are, as you know that we can see here two routes one is the root a and the second is the root b so the speed is a 10 kilometer per hour the distance is 14 million 14000 meters is nothing but 14 kilometers 20 kilometers just by looking at the distance and the speed 10 kilometer per hour which means to say here almost one hour 20 minutes kind of thing Whereas here root B, which contains the two hours kind of thing. So by just looking at the distance and speed, we can we would say that root A is much faster as compared to the root B. So as you felt that, and also you can see that we have a six kilometer distance and distance is also six kilometers far distance. Root B is a six kilometer far distance, six kilometer far distance. Just by looking at the six kilometer. So as everyone think that thought that root A is smaller distance, I mean, smaller distance uh, as compared to the root B, definitely everyone will choose the root A rather than root B. As everyone will choose the root A rather than the root B. So in this moment, what is going to happen guys in this moment? Simply, I would say root A is the best one, but the decision can happen only based on the two factors, such as like a dis a distance and speed. Definitely no. And maybe you may think that maybe Sunday, Sunday could be one day where no one works, or Saturday is another day where no one works. That probably could be a reason your traffic flow is very low. We did not consider the traffic flow. So that is the reason we need to explore kind of thing day of the week, day of the day of a week, which is nothing but Tuesday. Day of week is nothing but Tuesday. Time of the day is the morning 9 a.m. As you know that morning 9 a.m. is heavy traffic which happen. So as as you know that route A is the small distance. So most of them are traveling through route A, which could be high dense, which could be the high dense. Dense is nothing but more traffic. Along with the actual time, we also need to consider the traffic delay. Also, we need to consider traffic delay. So as you look into here, route B is the mild. That means no traffic at all. 
So what we are exploring and analyzing, this is the actual time of the data. Root A generally takes one hour 20 minutes to office, whereas root B does take two hours to the office, whereas root B takes the two hours to office. And uh, traffic delay, sir, for root is 55 minutes. Just we are predicting. Predict means we are predicting the future. Just assume that. Just at this timing, just assume that. So that means along with the actual time, we also need to include the predicted time. That means the delay time, traffic delay time. Whereas root B is, a, because root is a high dense top, high dense, because of that, we said the root is a more traffic. Whereas root B does not have any traffic because of mild. It is a fast moving kind of thing. So I would say that there is no traffic. That means zero minutes delay. So along with, so that means when you make a decision, when you're going to make a decision, along with the actual time, you also need to include the delay traffic delay time so in that moment we would say that based on a prediction the time required to reach office through root a two hours 15 minutes whereas root b is two hours now in order to if you want to make a decision you would like to make a decision which is the fastest route to the work does the root a is the fastest route to the work or does the root b is the fastest route to the work how do you make the solution guys the decision you are making that so definitely i will travel through route b i can able to say fifth i can we can able to say 15 minutes of time though we are traveling six kilometers far we can reach the office 15 minutes early so so that is how we are going to make a decision we are going to make a decision do you have any questions guys so far okay okay any questions guys any doubt about this so far any questions any doubt everyone is it clear guys is it clear everyone perfect no questions then let me move on to no doubt okay perfect let me move on to the let me move on to the, so as you said that data science we talking about the one is science we just understand that with the help of science how do you make that decision so now another part we went in we have not discussed in depth is the data simply said that data is a structural process of collecting data which contains the structured data semi-structured data and unstructured data let's try to understand the types of data let's try to understand the types of data before we're discussing about the architecture or the life cycle of the data science let's say types of data let's say types of data means uh, data simple sir before we're discussing about the types of data can you define term called data data is nothing but it is a it, data is nothing but a collection of facts or numbers or observations are simple description of the value simple to say data is nothing but description of the value it is a kind of fact for an example independence day for labor day in usa independence day of india republic day of india presidential day of usa or first world war covid uh, starting date uh, where it was started it is a kind of facts so what is the an unemployment rate numbers basically unemployment rate last month what is the unemployment rate in last quarter what is the gdp rate in last quarter what is the gdp rate in last 10 years it is a kind of a numbers or it is a kind of facts or it is a kind of a some number stock price basically another number everything kind of a data generally data is a raw data which can be any format covid the shape is also form it is a kind of data let's say traveling through office is a data traveling through bike is a data walking on road is a data number of kids in a family is a data number of loans you have in your is a data everything is a data so for our user understanding for user convenience we have divided the data into two three different formats for user convenience point of view we are divide the data into three different formats such as structure data structure data semi structured data and unstructured data here first of all we would like to understand about structured data structured data means 
the data which is in the form of table format the data which is in the form of table format it is in the form of the table format simple to say table format it is in the form of the table format simple to say table like it is a simple table which consists of rows and columns in data science world we never use term called rows or we never use the term called row columns most of the times we use the terms called rows is nothing but observations are kind of records kind of observation are kind of the records for an example columns is nothing but kind of variables are kind of attribute so structured data it is a kind of it it is a kind of form of table format which contains the rows and columns rows is also called as observations are also called as a records whereas the columns is called as a variables or other name is also called as a attribute some of the information for an example let me give an example some of the examples for this is the uh, rdbms excel these are the some of the example let me give a simple example for this guys let's say table let me draw a simple example in the x here in the table for an example here in the table for an example i have a name id for an example let's say i name id name name salary let's say experience location let's say these are the information here so id is 1 2 3 id is 1 2 3 let's say name is ksr salary is, let's say 50000 experience is 5 years location is bangalore let's say 1 2 4 let's say ranjit let's say 60000 experience is 2 years let's say hyderabad 1 to 5 let's say uh, shiva 70000 3 years maybe delhi for an example 1 to 6 let's say hari 1 lakh let's say experiences 8 years let's say bangalore romi so let's say 1 to 1 romi salary is 1 lakh dollar maybe 10 years experience maybe usa so what we have done this is a kind of a simple kind of a table format it is a kind of the table format all borders which contain the table format of the given here in this case here in this case the first one the bold one the bold which is in the red color this is our columns this is our columns simple to say all our columns are called as a variables columns are variables simple about what about this guys your 1 2 3 1 2 4 1 2 5 1 2 6 1 2 1 are the rows are also called as the attributes are also called as the sorry rows and record records are also called as the observations so by ju just by combining the rows and columns we can define it is a table table which contain which consist of both rows and column which table which contains the fixed dimensions fixed fixed dimensions what do you mean by fixed dimensions fixed dimension is nothing but we cannot change or we cannot modify it we cannot change or we cannot modify unless until we extensively explicitly we added the rows and columns we cannot change it that is the meaning of the fixed dimensions of the data that is the meaning of the fixed dimensions of the data makes sense it's a simple kind of a table format of the given data it is a simple kind of format of the given data now let's try to that is what the table information so so the table here if you look into the table as we as, as we given an example of the rdbms and excel generally generally what happens there are the two kind of files will be one is a flat files 
So what are the data sources for this? Let me explain the flat files. There are there the are data sources will be two types, guys. For structured data or any data, it could be first let me that is the data source are two types. One is a flat files. So one is the flat files. Let me write down here. Data sources are two types. Generally, one is flat files. Second is about this servers or databases or servers simple database or server database let's say hard disk or database anything so what do you mean by flat files here flat files is nothing any data which is in the form of csv file comma separated value maybe let's say excel ms excel basically ms excel and maybe in text files, somewhat text files, normal text files, where you can the data write the comma separated, colon separated, anything it could be. Generally, these three formats are called as the generally these three formats: CSV file, Excel file, and text file. Generally, these three fi file formats or type formats are called as the generally these three formats are called as the uh, called as the flat files. Simple call as a flat files. Simple it is called as a flat files. But the drawback with the flat files, you can able to handle these files from the desktop. The drawback, I mean not drawback, but in terms of the storage perspective, storage perspective, it may have it may store up to one million records. One million, one M. One million is nothing but ten lakh records. One million is nothing but ten lakh records. Imagine as as we are living in the world of data world digital world every day every minute every second we are generating the data so that means the data volume of data which increasing heavily so in that moment our flat files does not support us we have to use the either databases or servers the data initially we started with the databases called as a traditional database traditional databases traditional databases traditional database means the data which stores at it works at row by row level such as like mysql rdbms relational database manager dbms database management system oracle these are some terra data some of the example but these mysql rdbms dbms oracle these kind of data which stores only the structured data imagine your data is the image data Imagine your data is full of text data, Word document, PDF. In that moment, these database will not help us. Or it does not support us. It may require volume of cost, high cost of the servers kind of thing to store big data or large volume of data. To store the huge volume of big data kind of thing, we are going to use the platform called Hadoop and Spark. We are going to use the platforms called Hadoop and Spark. Uh, in terms of Hadoop, there is a no SQL which stores the unstructured data, right? There is a kind of a hive is there to process structured data. Spark supports for both uh, unstructured as well as structured data. Compared to Hadoop, Spark is ten times faster. This works on the this works on the row level, row by row. It works on the distributed environment level, distributed environment level. And as a due to infrastructure cost to, to reduce infrastructure, so to maintain such huge volume of data, we require the high servers, databases, all these things, hard disk. To process such kind of things, um, it is a, works on the software commodity, that's true. But to reduce the infrastructure costs, people are storing the data into cloud. They can access from anywhere in this world or in the globe. So the cloud also works on the spark, I mean to say distributed environment. The background of cloud which works on the spark environment only so simple that's what the i that is what the data sources will be like simple to say we'll discuss in depth in coming sessions guys now now we understand about the structured data how it stores cloud i mean cloud stores the structured data also of course it also stores the semi-structured unstructured data but because how it stores what the volume of data that's what we started with now we discuss about the structured data any questions guys any doubts so far 
any questions and any doubt so far perfect no question <laughs> yeah no okay go ahead please kavita uh, uh sir adobe stores only structured data adobe no it stores both structured and semi structured as well as unstructured data also okay mm, okay perfect now here in this case the structured data which will be rdbms excel all this thing now what we are trying to do semi structured data let me give an example of semi structured data so what do you mean semi structured the data which is in the form of the data which is in form of html xml and json files the data which is in the form of html json and xml files the data which is in the form of html json and xml of data for an example let me give a simple example for an example let's say let me go with the one website let's say amazon let me let me show you the example for this let me show you the real world example of it for an example let's say amazon amazon.in let's say we are in india we are storing let's say amazon what happened so this is a amazon website what you let's say you want to look into the some of the watching uh, for an example televisions so what happens here in this case amazon it went to the televisions basically so let's say i want to look into the samsung so basically what happened look into amazon samsung see here if you look into the url so we went to the amazon website we here we are looking the samsung plus tv samsung plus tv that means in the amazon samsung which comes under the electronic gadgets which mainly look into the samsung tv for an example wonder train so look into here wonder entertainment ultra uata6 so that means this information whatever the information you logged into that automatically it will go to the like samsung uh, inches 65 i'm um, 65 inches all this thing it will give us some idea about so let's say you order this product let's say imagine you order this product guys let's say imagine you order this product what happens this information whatever the information which order this product this information is going to be stored in the form of json format javascript object notations json means javascript object notation generally all the website data will be stored semi structure means json xml and html data these are three formats the, all the website data 95 to 99 percent of the data 95 to 97 percent of the data which will be stored in the form of json which will be stored in the form of the json which will be stored in the form of the json so 95 percent to 97 percent of data which will be stored in the form of the json format ja json full form is the java for javascript object notations html is nothing but hypertext markup language okay markup you know, xml is also markup language only now let's say if you go know about you might have heard about the wikipedia wikipedia stores in the form of xml and html investopedia it is also form of the html format right simple to say dot government agencies government agencies means which is a ng was basically which is a free of charts uh, free charity those kind of store those kind of websites are stored in the form of xml and html those kind of websites are stored in the form of xml and html formats of the data for an example here in this case in this case here in this case guys whatever the whatever the story we have so let's say i have a data on twitter for an example now i think in the month of november first week uh u.s elections are going to happen presidential elections are happening in the usa now as a common man i just want as a more enthusiastic person i want to understand who is going to win i want to understand i would like to understand who is going to win so i would like to understand who is going to win so in this moment what happens in this moment i want to understand who is going to win so us people more generally go with the most of them are more educated more educated they use generally social media so what do you mean by social media 
social media is nothing but like the data which is in the form of google or maybe we are in the facebook twitter twitter instagram these are the, so let's an example of twitter twitter when we draw a twitter when we said that twitter what happens the twitter the data whatever the data which stores the twitter with the help of twitter api maybe it is a huge volume of data generally we store the data in the form of hdfs hdfs is nothing but hadoop distributed file system or maybe we we'll store the spark context or we store the data in the cloud so from let's say imagine for time being we store the data in the form of hdfs what is the full form of hdfs hdfs is nothing but hadoop distributed file system simple to say hadoop distributed file system what twitter does they sell the data for an example let's say we are working abc company twitter sell uh, sell, sell the data to uh, abc company the abc company what they does they store the data hadoop now they want to understand the data so now they want to understand the um, people's behavior wh what people are thought, thinking about how people reaction towards the joy biden uh, and how people reaction towards the uh, you know trump so what happens we this is a business problem just want to understand the emotions of the people emotions just let's say we want to understand the people emotion so for that we are choosing a platform called twitter platform from the twitter with the help of twitter, twitter api we collected the data and we stored the information in hdfs that is a business problem also clear identify the emotions of people emotions identify the people emotions identify the people emotions so in order to identify the people emotions what we have done first of all we collecting the data the data which is in the hadoop hdfs we collect the data we processing the data data processing means as we said that it is a raw data we need to clean the raw data we need to clean the raw data and make the data into more useful formats more useful formats so and then we do explore and analyze the data explore and analyze the data so the data processing is a really really big step and it is out of data science problems out of data science problems out of data science problems so generally for any project guys 60 percent of time we allocated to data processing 60 percent of time we allocated to collecting the data and processing the data 60 percent of project where we spent for uh, collecting the data under data processing okay next point okay that is what the twitter that is what the data here in this case semi structured or unstructured data so let me go with the uh, semi structured unstructured data what do you mean by unstructured data unstructured data means the data which is in form of image audio video text data image audio video and text data kind of thing for an example image audio video and text kind text data kind of for an example let's say I have a data which contains the which contains about the gender production. Let's say I just want to know by let's say Puthi, uh, Punit. Just by looking at the Punit image, I would like to predict gender of Punit and image age of the age of Punit. For an example, let's say Ranjit. Just by looking at the Ranjit, and I need to predict it. For an example, Romi. Just by looking at the Romi image, I need to predict. I need to predict the gender of the Romi and the age of the Romi similarly for sai also the same so maybe let's say now as we are in the pandemic covid now every country be it india or be it usa or be it canada or be it australia be it europe asia europe everywhere one common thing we are doing now is wearing mask so some people if you observe that they're not following any rules i mean to say following they're not following any rules mean they're not wearing the mask we need to create an ai based system so to detect whether a person is wearing a mask or not so how would i know just i need to know the people just by looking at the face image of the person or face face where we have a mask or not just you need to predict it you need to tell you need to check it for that purpose to deal just like these are some of the examples 
uh, we can we can use the unstructured data we can use the unstructured data for this kind of things we can use the unstructured data maybe audio video video also one of the examples for this kind of things these are the three different types of the data i hope everyone are clear about the structured data semi structured data and unstructured data do you have any questions guys no do you have any questions guys now so far do you have any questions guys so far perfect no questions is it not clear 100% no questions only abhishek is replying what about others guys are able to follow me or no uh, sir uh, when you say unstructured data here uh, it is mentioned as text data also do we have any uh, specific files with the extensions for this unstructured data i got it it's audio video and uh, text like, data yeah. text data means word document right pdf okay okay text it means pdf or document this kind of thing for an example i think let me check it for an example uh, 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 for an example i don't have it at this point okay mm. and let's say pdf any pdf document with just word documents this kind of things okay, okay. now for an example okay let me go with the one example now type of that okay now i hope everyone are clear now so far guys i want session should be more interactive hari prasad hari prakash charan anil kale kavita kavita abhishek any ko muniraj madhusudan pramod ranjit romi shiva sai sunila veer veeresh nagarjuna any questions guys no questions then okay fine now now for ex now okay let me go with the let me go with the life cycle guys let me give a one real world example uh, how data science works with a simple layman example we'll discuss today uh, layman example as we will discuss in first day we are discussing about the layman example so data science life cycle guys for any data science project these are the generally steps we generally does follow first and foremost important is the business we'll discuss one by one guys we'll discuss one by one uh business understanding guys business understanding means as we as we define today as we are clearly knew about data science is all about how do you make a decisions or how to make a decision that means data science with the help of data science we are going to make the decisions with the help of data science we are going to make the decision first and foremost point is all about business understanding so what business understanding what is a business understanding let me give a simple example let me give a simple example of this one business airtel is a company airtel is a company i hope everyone know about airtel or everyone know about at&t verizon verizon like comcast like uh, vi vodafone idea like uh, these are the company max these are the different different unina these are different companies let's say one of the company called airtel or let's say one of the company called vodafone vodafone reaches to you you mean data scientist hey data scientist we are facing a challenges of customer attrition we are facing a challenge of customer attrition here what do you mean by attrition attrition is nothing but the customer who are leaving the network attrition is nothing but customer who are leaving the network uh, i need airtel uh, airtel ask you i need an information i just want to understand why customers are leaving the network what are the factors or key factors are driving them to leave the network and then simultaneously once you identify the customer who are leaving the network why they are leaving the network 
you also need to predict who is going to leave the network in future you also need to predict who is going to leave the network in future that's what our goal we need to find out here that is our business problem is everyone clear the business problem is very simple and very easy we are going to solve a business problem of customer attrition here attrition is nothing but the customer who are leaving the network the customer who are leaving the network so we would like to understand and identify the reasons why customers are leaving the network and what factors what are the factors are influencing them and influencing them to leave the network and we would like to predict and identify who is going to leave the network in future that's what the business understanding once you understand the business once you are clear about the business problem what you have to do what is your next step is data collection so data collection is nothing but collecting the data from various sources so it could be a flat files or it could be a it could be a traditional database or it could be a big data or it could be a cloud most of the cases guys 99 percent 95 more than 99.99 percent no one are going to use the flat files no one are going to use the, no one will use the flat files most of them are using either mysql it is a open source we are going to discuss in our course as uh, some of them i mean uh, in banking industry there are the companies like jp morgan city bank uh, hsbc are uh, there are some banking companies like uh, uh like uh, wall I mean, like uh, like a uh, wind trust uh, like uh, commonwealth bank uh, these are some of the banks they are using the data of big data walmart is a company they are also using the data of the big data for an example louis a company they are using the walmart and louis they are using the let's say cloud platforms and some of the banking banking companies now they are moving towards the cloud some of them are using the google cloud some of them are using the azure some of them are using the uh, aws amazon web services amazon web services okay once we in all the platforms though you are in the traditional database or you are using the um, you are using the big data or you are using the cloud platform one common phenomenon in all the cases is you are using the programming tool as python you are going to use the programming tool as the python programming tool so once you collected the data guys what you need to do understand the data what is there in our data and what what kind of data does we have does it at a consumer customer level data customer means each customer for an example uh, ksr is one customer what is the age of ksr what is the location of the ksr what is the occupation of the ksr salary of the ksr so this is a kind of a consumer customer for an example your phone number phone number and your other id your ssn id though anything which is linked with the ssn id ssn id your name all these things could be your uh, consumer level data there is a transaction level data transaction means transaction basically more than one record which could be repeat but id could be a different id like transaction id complaint id bill id payment id this could be the different once data understanding is done uh data understanding which happens at raw data uh, which which happens always data understanding performs at a raw data once your data understanding is done we are going to perform pre -prepare, preparing the data data preparation how to make the data into more useful how do you remove the unnecessary and unwanted, unwanted information what if your data is having the missing values what if your data is having the extreme values how are we going to deal this kind of things for an example you just want to understand the data preparation also help us to understand the patterns of the data once your data preparation is done we are going to do with the data modeling this data modeling is nothing but performing the performing an actions of machine learning and deep learning algorithms performing an actions of machine learning and deep learning activities uh, uh, performing the machine learning and deep learning activities and model evolutions um, once you built a machine learning and deep learning model how do you evaluate how do you know whether it is correct or wrong how do you know whether the model is correct or wrong 
So once your model is performing well on test data set, test data means the different different use cases, as well as the, the data set which, which which you have used to train the model or which you use which you have used to build the model, which can be used. Uh, we can do that. Once everything is perfect, we do the deploy the model. We can deploy the model in different different formats. We can deploy the model in Git. We can deploy the model in Flask. We can deploy the model in uh, Docker. We can simply write SQL code also to deploy the model. Once your deployment, everything is done. That means your model is in production. We are iterating every time. If your iteration while doing the iterating the model, if you felt that you observed that there is something wrong, again you are going to build the model and you repeat this process till the point you get best and final model, best final model of the data, best final model of the data. This is just uh, this is a kind of first. Uh, uh, this is a just a kind of the understanding about the each and every step, understanding about the each and every step it, it, it these steps are starting from the business understanding to iteration so let me go with let let let, let us go through the one by one step first of all let me go with the one by one step how are we going to discuss all these things so as we said that business understanding or business requirement what is the business requirement first of all understand the problem so in business requirement three major things we are going to discuss understand the problem identify the scope and identify the attributes that need to be predicted identify the attributes that need to be predicted that need to be helpful to us so understand the problem guys understand the problem is really really important so what is our problem what is the problem are we going to discuss now the problem is very simple and very easy for an example atel as a company we discussed as we discussed just now atel is a company we are going to atel is a company uh, they are facing a challenge of attrition they are facing a challenge of attrition attrition means what is the definition or meaning of the attrition attrition means the customer who are leaving the network customer who are leaving the network leaving the network customer who are leaving the network so this is the there's a there's a problem the it will identified a problem called customer leaving the network now they want to this is a problem so what they want to understand the problem they're leaving the net this is a problem so once the, they want to understand why they're leaving what factors are influencing them to leave the network why they're leaving and what factors are influencing them to leave the network and as well as who is going to leave in future who is going to leave in future so these are the three parameters we are going to follow or we are going to discuss now why they are leaving what factors are influence them to leave the network who are going to leave once we are able to identify that uh, once you understand the problem once you are able to solve this problem the scope or benefit what 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 is the benefit are we going to get from this problem what is the benefit are we going to get from this problem the benefit it is going to be simple to say the benefit is very simple the company atel company will understand will able to get to know who is the loyal customer to the bank who is the loyal customer to the bank and the second point is from which segment from which region are they able to generate the revenue from which segment or region from which segment or region are they able to generate the revenue segment or region are they able to generate the revenue so that is the scope so if you able to solve the problem we can company will get a benefit kind of thing who is the loyal customer to the bank sorry who is the loyal customer to the company atel company and from which segment or region are the company able to generate the revenues and next in order to get in order to solve this business problem or in order to get this uh, benefits we need to identify the attributes that need to be predicted we need to identify attributes is nothing but columns are kind of variables variables are kind of attribute so what attribute what are the attributes what are the columns or what kind of information it need to be predicted it need to be required so what we are going to do i hope everyone are clear imagine this thing this problem we are solving for the postpaid customers this problem we are solving for postpaid customers this problem we are solving for postpaid customers postpaid customers so 
the object is very very clear so we are solving a business problem for airtel company for the segment called for the segment one of the segment called one of the segment is postpaid segment the problem we are going to solve is attrition problem attrition is nothing but airtel company is facing a challenge of attrition attrition is nothing but the customer who are living the network the customer who are living the network so and they want to they explicitly they want to understand why they are living the network what factors are influence them what factors are influencing them to live the network and who is going to in the future once you understand an existing customer in future who is going to leave the network that's what they're trying to and they want they're trying to understand if they're able to solve this problem they are going to get the benefits of who is the loyal customer to the bank company i mean this company means airtel company from which segment or region are they able to generate the revenues so here and in and in order to solve that we need to identify the attributes uh identify the identify the attribute that need to be predicted attributes nothing but columns so okay we are very clear on the business requirement so guys if anyone are not clear on the business requirement please let me know i can help you one more time perfect perfect okay data collection data collection so okay data collection means once you are clear we are clear with the business problem guys we are clear with the business problem what 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 we do here we need to collect the data so what do you mean by what what data do i need for my project so our problem customer attraction our project what data do we need what data do i need the data could be it could be guys can you think about what data it could be required to us can you think about it just think it what data do you need guys what is your thoughts think it guys muli uh, madhusudan what data do we required can you think about it you are everyone you are using a smartphone right everyone are using a smartphone you might have a, you might have changed the network also from one network to other network what factors could influence you to leave the network one is customer database one is customer database like call data recording okay i agree call data recording okay perfect next offers from competitors offers from the competitors okay perfect agree next next existing next, network services existing service provider okay i would say simple like billing information could be bill amount bill amount could be one factor maybe payment information maybe like uh, we have the complaints information network information uh network information are uses uses means data uses voice uses sms mms roaming this kind of information we can say so what data do i need for my project is nothing but these are the different information do we required such as like a billing information payment information complaint information usage information under the usage we have data usage voice sms mms roaming value added top ups these are the some of the information right so okay we understand what kind of data we required now where do i get this required like of course uh, like a uh we uh, can also say that demographical information demo under the demographical information like uh, customer age gender region ratio i mean uh, re, like color these kind of things everything will come come into the picture so what are the data sources what are the data sources for us the data sources as we discussed it could be a flat files or it could be a traditional database or it could be a uh you know big data or it could be a cloud platform okay you let's imagine you are using the mysql for an example for timing let's imagine you are using the mysql okay your data is residing at mysql but how can you obtain the data by combining how can okay we have different different set of files we have but how can you obtain the data okay, we can obtain the data by Add by combining the multiple data sets into a single data set 
we can obtain the data by combining all the data sets into a single data set the the single data set are a file which is also in the form of tabular format or which is in the form of table format the most efficient way to store the data in table format the most efficient way to store the data in the table format the person who does all these things collecting the data to the person who does all these things collecting the data collecting the data and make the data into a single file or single table or ta uh, table format the person is called as the data engineer the person is called as the data engineer the data engineer okay the data engineer okay perfect generally attrition point of view there are the two kind of attrition will be there for an example as you're working in organization let's say you're working in organization of atos there is a generally we have a two kind of uh, we have two kinds of attrition will be there one is voluntary second is involuntary voluntary attrition second is involuntary attrition so voluntary means employee he or he himself or she himself or herself uh, leaving the company leaving the company by their own without uh, but involuntary means company forcefully to leave them the organization or the network those are called as involuntary now we need to know uh, as a data engineer he doesn't know he said that these are data sources collect the data he doesn't know whether we need to collect the voluntary involuntary attrition data or involuntary attrition data so once we collect uh, whatever the data engineer who collected the data which is in the form of raw data so in the data processing with the help of data processing we are transforming the data into more desired format we are transforming the data into more desired format what we are trying to do we are transforming the data into more desired format so how how do you make the data into more desired format with the help of data cleansing methods with the help of data cleansing method what are the data cleansing methods we have a three different type of data cleansing method such as missing values corrupted data remove the unnecessary data first of all uh, we try to understand the remove the unnecessary data what do you mean it so as we, as i just mentioned that we are going to perform analysis on voluntary churn customers but with data which also include the involuntary churn customers so we don't require the involuntary churn customers so we are going to leave we are we are going to discard that kind of data which contain the involuntary churn customers so that is the meaning of the remove unnecessary data corrupted data means that while collecting that while storing the data corrupted data that means the data which is not in the format correct format which which, which does not make any sense for an example some data for an example let's say bill amount some data let's say 3000 4000 some they have written like 3332002 tw2000 like they have written that guys you cannot able to hear my voice can you hear me Yes, guys, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yes, good. Yes. Can hear you. Yeah, someone told me I'm yes, not someone. able to hear. Oh, okay, perfect. So corrupted data. That means the data does not make any sense. Uh, the data, some let's say some special characters are there in the middle. That data we cannot. We have to treat. We need to clean it. That is a corrupted data. Missing data. When you combine the multiple, some customer might not provide the might not use the data. Their information could be zero, or their information could be null. some customer may not use the voice call some customer not do any messages uh, sms is basically anything it, so that kind of how do you deal what data processing does it convert the data into more transform the data into more desired or useful formats with the help of data cleansing method or and as well as uh, also remove or discard the unnecessary or unwanted information remove or discard the unnecessary are unwanted the information that is the meaning of this case okay perfect now here in this case we have this we have heard that once the data processing is done we need to explore the data 
explore the data that is most identify the pattern once you un, once you clean the data data processing is done you need to explore the data explore the that means understanding the data is really really important okay with the, some machine learning techniques or any techniques you just clean the data or the data you made the data into more useful but as a data scientist you need to understand uh, you need to understand what is there in your data uh, that means you need to understand the patterns of a data pattern what is group of the customers are living network does the younger age generation millennial or does the x customers y customer y means y or z anything who is above the 50 year old they call as z generations anything in between 40 35 to 40 they call as a y generation anything in between 25 to uh, 25 to um, 25 to 35 those are called as x uh, anything we call as the less than 25 those are called as the millennials what is group of what is group of people are living does the millennials are living the network does the x group y group z groups are living the network our second point does the bill amount who are the customer high usage customers are living the network or low usage customers are living the network usage means it could be a data usage or it could be voice or it could be sms or it could be data anything it could be does the customers are living the high bill amount customers or low bill customers what tenure does the uh, recent customers are living more or does the old customer old customer means are the customer are, are the customers who stay with us from long time less tenure customer tenure those who define with the tenure less tenure customers are living more or the high tenure customers are living the more we need to understand that so that is what the where we are drawing the patterns of the data with the help of patterns of with the help of patterns of the data we are going to draw the useful insights we can get the some key factors and generate the hypothesis does the customer who are living the network or does the customer who are staying with the network are the average bill amount is same or not are the average age is same for the customer who has stayed with the network who left the network what about the payment amount does the payment amount is same for the customer who is staying with the network and who are living the network similarly does the customer who are stay with the network work what about the data usage what about their bill amount how many calls are they made are they made in a month on an average how many calls they have made in last quarter like this kind of hypothesis or patterns can be drawn with the help of data exploration so in simple layman words we can tell that data exploration gives an idea why customers are living the network and what factors are influencing them to leave the network and what factors are influencing them to leave the network so that is most important to us that is most important to us so that is most important to us data exploration so data exploration is also called as exploratory data analysis it is also called as exploratory data analysis exploratory data analysis okay so next step is modeling modeling means which kind which contains the both machine learning model and deep learning model or ai models in it so let's say optimal data features i mean to say we let's say we collected all the attributes we are not going to pass all the attributes into the model we may pass only the attributes or columns which are required really required for us machine learning so how do you select the most important that is called as a feature selection how do you select the most important model and create a model it could be machine learning model or deep learning model create a model that predicts target most accurately that means predicting the target means we, we need to predict more accurately who is going to leave the network and who is going to stay the network and evaluate or test the efficient once you're able to predict it correctly we need to evaluate or test the efficiency of a model when it test test the efficiency of a model what is the efficiency means here is very simple efficiency is nothing but we need to understand about the we need to understand about the who is going to efficiency means uh, whether our model is working correctly or not we need to predict understand them correctly we need to predict understand them correctly that is what the, that is the meaning of the evaluate and test the efficiency of a model test the efficiency of a model guys 
that's the meaning of this one okay perfect now here in this case once your model is done everything is done you are going to deploy the model into production environment before we are going to deploy the model you need to check the deployment in dependency issues suppose you want to deploy the model in cloud what are the depending is dependent issues dependency suppose let's say you want to deploy the model in big data what kind of dependency issues are facing suppose you want to deploy the model in a simple mysql server what kind of issues are you going to get and suppose let's say you want to deploy the model in uh, uh, let's say through web apis web applications uh, flask is the one of the platform where it can help us to deploy the model in web applications what are the factors which are influencing them so deploy model okay these are the dependency issues deploy them before we are going to deploy the model into and deploy the model into production environment we need to check the model efficiency with different different test cases or with a different different environments once everything is done correctly then we we start try with trying to monitor the performance of a model from time to time uh, how our model performed last month how our model is going to perform next month how our model is performing current month how our model is going to perform after three months how our model was performed last three months so this kind of performance we does uh, okay we check it this is the life cycle of the life cycle of the data science okay i will show you the graphs all these things for attrition all these things i'll show you in in tomorrow session kind of thing because this is a very very first session for you i don't want to make you more con more confused okay guys now any now sir okay everything is clear but one thing we are facing a challenge is sir you talked about the term called machine learning you talk about the term called deep learning or you talk the term called ai artificial intelligence can you distinguish between the what do you mean by machine can you distinguish the terms machine learning deep learning and ai what does it mean sir let me explain you those terms clearly machine learning deep learning and ai so all these three terms guys ai machine learning deep learning these are the part of the these are all part of the ai these are all the part of data science as you know as you heard about the data science is all about making a decisions so under the data science these three components ai machine learning deep learning are the components of data science are the component of data science now we are trying to understand about the ai ai is simple like a mimic of human behavior it is a mimic of human intelligence how it will be how it is a mimic of human intelligence it purely runs on based on conditional logics maybe it could be if 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 else rule if then else maybe decision trees like this kind of thing are under the ai the background of ai which works both machine learning and deep learning for an example let's say you want to uh, for an example let me give you one let's say what happens um, let's say maybe biometric biometric it is a ai application simple biometric is what it does first you are creating your thumbnails your thumbnails once it's stored what happens it try to match it every day when you're logging into office 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 every day you're just doing a thumb press it try if it matches it shows that okay presented if it does not matches it throws and it says that oh the person did not attend the class college or office anything it could be so it works based on the some condition or some logic okay that is simple to say it is a simple as a layman it is a human mimic of human intelligence it purely runs on the if then else rules based conditions so next term is called machine learning so guys machine learning is simple like uh, it is a kid it is a, like a kid machine learning extensively works as extensively works for structured data it does not work on complex data such as uh, such as semi structured and unstructured data and the machine learning as i just mentioned machine learning is like as a kid why i said it is a kid we need to train the machine how how are you going to work that means how machine is going to work similarly when we have a kid very small kid six months we try we we are trying to we are trying to teach how to walk we are trying to 
teach how to eat we are trying to teach how to speak we are trying to sleep we are trying to provide we are trying to help them to understand the discipline kind of all these things let's say we are trying to help them to speak will they able to speak in very first day definitely no uh, every day we just when they are memorizing the things memorization self learning well memorizing and self learning there are the two different terms are really one is a learning memorize learning means keep on listening the same word let's see if i said a kid to dad will they able to remember in one day they cannot memorize it when we are calling self when we are when you are teaching the same word for continuous multiple times i mean to say the kid kid dad 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 what they are trying to do they keep on learning the same word for multiple times they will memorize in their mind once something is memorized in their mind they can able to perform the task that is what the two terms which are really important which i mentioned self learning Le- learning is nothing but keep on le- keep on getting the same thing more, uh, getting more same thing and memorizing means the whatever we learn that need to be memorized similarly machine learning also whatever the input we are passing to the machine first try to understand it try to learn man, many number of times and memorize it once it memorize it predict the future it predict the future with the help of experience it will improve the task performance with the help of experience experience means as a kid also once you get experience if he is is watching the same thing for multiple days he can able to call it he can able to remember it for more lifelong like similarly machine learning also does the same thing same thing it means machine learning also it enable the machine to improve the experience this same task are performing multiple times with the help of statistics statistics we can do this so next important thing is the deep learning so whereas machine learning cannot perform for the complex data such as uh, image data text data speech audio video kind of to process such kind of volume of data to process such volume of data to complex data such as image uh, image audio video speech kind of thing it uh, deep learning works like as a uh, human mind it connect i mean as human the way human minds is connected entire body through neurons through our through nerves here also through different nodes it perform it is a it is a different node it perform the task same task can be performed multiple times in more complex manner if you want to execute the deep learning we are required to have the more of we require to have more of more of data it does not perform a small amount of data it always perform on the large amount of the data so like a chatbot chatbot is a for an example chatbot let me give one example let me give one example i think i think let me give one example guys um, mm, mm. let me give one example chatbot i mean i'll show you our examples later let me go with the generic example which are available in the market for an example let's say act corp act is a one fiber brand uh, act is one of the fiber brand in uh, uh, in bangalore explicitly i know in bangalore here see here this is a chatbot or let's say uh, for an example let's say if i go to the ksr concept this is the one thing here uh, i let's say this is the one thing here let's say here let's say here chat this is a chatbot kind of thing so hi welcome to act please select the services you need to have so automatically no one is there let's say act new uh, act new need new connection oh we would okay automatically it is directing to the entire your details for quick response automatic no one is there automatic system it is taking it is an ai application for an example if you go here our website also it is our website ksr consulting service here of course we connected with the chat i mean we connected with the chat whatsapp automatically for us in our case uh, at this point we directly human is connecting this chat we directly human chat automatically it will give a chart to us we need to download all these things of course i have not downloaded it so that is what the meaning here in this case so this is the ai applications for an example i will show you some examples in the coming session how to predict the gender kind of thing the background of the ai can be done with the help of machine learning and deep learning of the machine learning and deep learning guys do you have any questions at this point
Okay, perfect. Now, okay, no questions, guys. Is everyone clear? Okay, okay. Last thing, what is a typical day? What is the typical day of uh, in your life of data scientist? So, guys, data scientist. As a data scientist, you need to learn more of more on statistics and science. Science is nothing but um, science is nothing but machine learning and deep learning AI part. So less on the data engineering part. Data engineering means collecting the data. But in our course, guys, in our course, we are also covering the data engineer because after this pandemic, I mean, earlier uh, I prepared this slide long back. Um, earlier we used to have separate roles for data engineers, data analyst, and data scientist. So for visualization, all these things, data analyst means who does the visualization, all this. But what happens after the pandemic uh, to reduce the cost? They are looking the they are looking a person who who does have a knowledge on data engineer side, data analyst side, and data scientist side. It would be great. Of course, in real world, you are not going to perform all these things, all these three. But you need to be you need to you need to have a knowledge that would be really good. As a data scientist, you are going to perform the different tasks. Uh, some of the tasks which I mentioned, data cleansing. Always we receive a data which, as a data engineer sends the data in the raw data. The data which does not make any sense. We need to convert the raw data into more useful format. That can be done with the help of data cleansing method. Next, once your data is once your data is clean, in order to understand the data in depth we are going to perform the hypothesis or hypothesis testing assumptions how assumptions hypothesis is nothing but kind of assumptions are compare the different groups are different attributes are different rows of the data with the help of hypothesis testing and the statistical inference we are going to get the inferences we are going to get the, some insights of the data for an example, time series, one of the models I just uh, one saw uh, on uh, time series model predicting the times. For an example, number of visitors for burger sales, KFC is a one shop where we would like to understand how many sales are we going to get. Now, suggesting an appropriate algorithm for a problem set. For a problem set, we need to suggest an appropriate algorithm. Algorithm, what kind of algorithm do we need to suggest? Are we going to suggest a machine learning algorithm? are we going to suggest a deep learning algorithm and at once you have done these kind of things we need to provide a provide an a recommendation to the customer to solve the problem solve the for given problem so recommendation is really really important generally these things we does life typical life as a data scientist so what kind of role does does a data scientist have for an example, simple data scient role. So uh, data for an example, let's say data scient role. What is a simple role? So most of the question, what kind of role does we have? What is the life of data scientist? This kind of question generally occurs in the uh, interview prospect. In interview prospect also, can you tell me what is your role in your org current organization? Can you can you tell me what your daily task kind of things? So this so the, uh, to understand such kind of things, it will be really helpful for us. So let's say business want to develop a time series forecasting. Uh, let's say time series means uh, with respect to time, we need to forecast. So what we're trying to forecast the application here, stock price prediction. So that means every minute, every hour and every second, we need to predict the stock price. So the way we're predicting that with respect to time, we're predicting something, then it is called as the time series forecasting. With respect to time, we're predicting something. That is called as a time series forecasting. In order to solve this business problem, what we are going to get? Get the required historical data. What does it mean? Historical. In the we want to predict the stock price. Let's say I have one stock called DMART. Uh, let's say I want to stock called Reliance Oil. So hey, Reliance Oil is going to be 2000. I cannot tell that directly. Based on the historical data, historical data means existing or previous data with the help of historical or existing data. We can able to tell how much price it could be. So that means historical data. That means collecting the data. Here, collecting the historical data. Historical means existing data. That is most important to us. Once we collect the data, 
you need to perform the in we need to generate the insights of the data from the data in order to generate the insights of the data we are going to perform the exploratory analysis exploratory data analysis exploratory data analysis will give an idea about the overall idea about the data it will also tells about the in depth of the data what what is there what was there how do you get it with respect to that pro produce the trends what is the last three months trend what is the stock price last three months what is the stock price last six months these kind of things and apply the various mission various uh, forecasting techniques and uh, come and uh, choose the best one based on the accuracy and uh, develop the time and develop the appropriate time series model and deploy to and uh, hand over to engineers for deployment this is what role does generally with us yeah this is a simple problem we have taken here into the considerations so nowadays nowadays explicitly after the covid so people are looking have a knowledge strong knowledge on engineering side data engineering side and data analyst side data analyst means who does visualization all kind of thing and along with the data science side of course which include the deployment also in our course we are going to cover all these three things that's all for today guys do you have any questions in tomorrow session we will take the one banking problem and we will see the life cycle of the data science okay any questions guys